Okay, welcome back to another edition of Five Minutes on K-12 Online Learning with, and today our with is Dr. Karen Pratt. So Karen, can you start off by telling us a little bit about yourself? Um, so kia ora everyone, I'm, um, I'm in New Zealand and I'm a senior lecturer at the University of Otago College of Education where I am also the director of their centre for, the College's Centre for Distance Education and Learning Technologies. Um, and I do all my teaching online at the university and I've been researching online teaching and learning in secondary and university level things since 2000. So. Okay, very good. So Karen, now I know in New Zealand they are just starting this week the distance learning offerings that have been uh, going on and here in North America, depending on where they're to, we've got folks that have been at this now for somewhere between one and three weeks in most cases. Um, so we've got a bunch of folks that are really new to this kind of environment. So we have a bunch of folks that don't have any training at all in this environment. Um, and you've worked with teachers that have been introduced to this situation not necessarily under these circumstances for <laughs> over a decade now. So um, what advice would you give to these folks that are just starting out that really have no background in this area? I, was say, I think first you've got to remember the broader context, which is that this is not, you know, the kind of online teaching and learning we would recommend to anyone. I know you said in one of your earlier, earlier um, five minutes with that, you know, normally you start from scratch and you plan your entire course out knowing it's going to be online and that is not what's happening here this is this is an emergency this is last minute we're not aiming for perfect we're aiming for good enough and i think as part of that context remembering that families are under enormous stress you know you might have several children at home you might have parents you might have one who's an essential worker in new zealand going out to work still someone else is working from home everyone's going to be under stress and anxiety. And so I think being forgiving of your students, their parents, and of yourself, because I mean, these teachers may well be working from home with their own own children who are also trying to do online learning. So, um, so yeah, who knows what's going to be going on. Um, and, and because of that, you know, in an ideal world, you'd be going, oh, well, you know, they can get their parents, you know, their parents are at home with them, they can help but they may well be not in a position to help because they may well be being expected to work eight hours a day from home, et cetera. So I think that's really important to remember. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Um, okay, so you mentioned uh, parents there for a sec. I'm sorry to cut you off a little there. Um, <laughs> we also, as you alluded to, we've got a lot of parents now who have always really been partners in the educational mm. system, but they're, we're really asking them to take on a, a new role with a, a lot of responsibilities that they wouldn't normally have as part of that partnership. Um, what kind of advice would you give to, to those folks? They're not expected to be the teacher. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, they are not expected to suddenly become experts in calculus or, or physics or even in teaching their six-year-old how to, you know, do one-to-one -one matching or teach them how to read or anything. But what they can do is um, make sure they keep their kids calm and settled and enjoying life. They can continue involving kids in everyday activities that are actually a really important part of learning. They can make sure they're still socialising. I mean, school is so much more than just the academics. It's, you know, the socialisation and, the, you know, there's things like art and drama that often get overlooked, but can certainly easily be done at home. Um, if you've got older kids, then working with them to help manage themselves. So doing things like setting up a timetable and then supporting them to keep to it. So, you know, if you know that your child's plan to do maths from 10 to 10 30 in the morning don't get them to come and unload the dishwasher during that time unless they can you know, I don't know create some logarithm that that is the most effective way of unloading the dishwasher um, and often I mean something we found with um, with our kids that work online all the time is often when they get stuck they don't actually need specialist help what they need is an adult who can sit and read what they're supposed to be doing and work with them to go, okay, so what you think the teacher's asking you to do is this, and look, this is what they're saying, you know, and here's your resources. And if you don't, can't figure out what they're supposed to be doing, make sure they contact the teacher. One of the biggest problems is the kids not asking for help. So making sure that if the kid's stuck, get them to just contact their teacher and say, help, what am I supposed to be doing? 
Very good. Very good. Well, thank you for all of this, Kieran. Um, so this has been another edition of Five Minutes on K-12 Online Learning with, and today it's been with Dr. Kieran Pratt from down in New Zealand.